Hey everyone, I'm Nargis and I work at Below as Android engineer. Today I want to talk about how you can make your Android app compatible with your Chromecast. It means if you already have a media app, you can add casting to it. Currently, I'm working on iView project, which is video streaming service by Australian Broadcasting Corporation, as known as ABC. And in iView, we have mobile and also TV app. We also have casting feature. And that's how I got into casting. So what is casting? Casting means a stream content from your mobile to other devices that support Google Cast, like a smart TV. And after casting, your phone becomes the remote control and you can control the content on the other device. So for adding casting to your Android app, we need to use Google Cast SDK, which provides APIs to recognize cast devices. This SDK, it also helps us to connect to those devices. We can use this SDK for Android and iOS app. And I found it very useful and easy to use this SDK. It's very handy to add any UI component that you need for casting. It's important to know how casting works and the receiver, the cast device, doesn't directly read the message from the sender app, that is your mobile app, but it does from a web app. So when you cast on from a sender app, like your Android app, you ask the cast device to open a specific web app, that is our receiver app. And when this cast device is, when this receiver app is loaded by the cast device, you can communicate between sender and receiver and send the data between them. The receiver app runs on the cast enabled devices that can be a smart TV, a Chromecast device, or even a smart speaker. And this app is responsible for responding to the sender comments. Well, the sender app plays the role of the controller, and this app manages all the user interaction with the content. For example, when you cast your content on the TV and you play or pause or change the volume, any interaction. I developed the sender app using Google Code Lab, and I also use sample app of the Google for receiver app, and I'll show you the flow and how this works. So this is a screenshot of my sender app. And when user clicks on the cast button, the cast framework will open a dialog with all discovered devices. And after user select the cast device, the cast framework will ask the uh, the cast framework will ask the cast device to open a web app that is our receiver app. And once this cast device will open, open the receiver app, the cast framework will create a communication channel between sender and receiver. And after connecting, you can just send the data between them. That's a screenshot after casting, you can see the content on the sender and receiver. And there are some UI principle specifically to the cast app. For example, when you, um, when the content is paused, the TV app indicates that is paused with a pause button, while the sender app indicates that is ready to play with a play button. There are some different um, different UI principle for the casting app, and to make sure we are achieving those principles, we need to review our app with the design checklist. There's a design checklist for the sender app. And the first one says after user can connect to the cast device, we need to show a cast dialog and user can control casting with this dialog. The next one is expanded controller that we need to have in our casting app. The expanded controller has everything related to the player. You can see play fast forward button. We can have a closed caption button. We also need to show the cast button in the expanded controller. We also need to have a mini controller that is the smaller version of the cast um, of the expanded controller. We also need a notification controller that goes to the notification bar and user can control casting from the notification bar. 
And the last one is a lock screen controller that user can control casting without unlocking the phone. So for using this cast SDK and for adding casting to our Android app, we need to add some libraries to our Gradle file. The first one is Media Rotor that help us to provide us the cast button and help us to find uh, cast devices and discover them. The next one is cast framework that help us with all the session management and all the UI component that we need in the design checklist. After having the library, we need to initialize the cast context. And the cast context is a global singleton object of the cast framework, which coordinates all the cast interaction. For initializing this cast context, we need to use cast context class and we need to call this function get shared instance and it's just lazily initialized now we need to have the cast button that is implemented by media rotor button and the design checklist says that we need to show the state of the button well when it's connected or disconnected for adding the cast button to our code we need to use cast button factory and we need to call setup media root button function and we need to pass context and menu and this item that is cast button to this function. As you see, this item is the cast button and it's provided by media root action provider class. Now that we have our cast button, we need to have a session manager listener for connecting to a device, launch or join a receiver app and connect to that receiver app and initialize a media control. This is a screenshot of my session manager listener and there are some session management function. And one of the most important one is when application is connected to the cast device. And that's when we send the data. And the mini controller is also provided by the CAS SDK and the CAS SDK provides a custom view, which is mini controller fragment, which can be added uh, to the app layout file. As you see, I have a fragment and I can just uh, add this mini controller fragment and it's so easy to implement this UI. We can also customize any of these UI components. For example, if you want to change the cast title text appearance, or if you want to change the cast large stop button icon, you can customize everything in this code. And it's for the mini controller, but you can also change this and customize other UI components in the casting. For the lucky screen and notification, we need to use cast option. For example, for the notification option, we need to have notification option class and call builder function. We also need to call set target activity class name and pass the related activity to that and also just build the notification uh, bar component. We have the same as steps for the lucky screen. And the last one is expanded controller that Google Cast design checklist says we need to have expanded controller. And to do that, we can just use this expanded controller activity and with this line, menu inflator and call inflate uh, method, we can just pass the UI for the expanded controller. After finishing the cast app and implementing all the UI components, I was wondering how I can do the same with Jetpack Compose. There are some similar steps that we need to follow. The first one is adding the SDK library. The second one is create a cast option provider to provide the cast options. And also we need to create a cast session manager to manage the cast session. They are all similar with the one that I've done. The difference is with the UI and composable function. And we need a composable function to display cast button and other UI components and also handle the user interaction. This is my composable function for the cast button. We need to have a composable annotation. We also need to pass cast state and also session manager to our cast button. And for the other UI components like mini controller and expanded controller, 
as you saw, they were all written in uh, with XML file. And like this one mini controller is a fragment. And to use this fragment to a Jetpack Compose, we need to use an Android view and pass that Android view to our composable function. So we use Android view and we pass the fragment to it. And we have the same for the lucky screen and also expanded controller. We can pass XML file or activity or fragment to Android view. And there are some references that are used for developing this cast app, testing app. And the last one is for the Jetpack Compose and it's about how we can use Android view and how we can implement some uh, XML and fragment into our Compose view. That's it. That's my Slack ID in the GDG channel. And that's my LinkedIn ID. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening. Is there any questions?